How's it going, Nix? Uh, doing good. How are you doing, Kix? I am just swell. Thanks for asking. So, right out the gate, I gotta ask, how's it feel to be the first team to beat Gotcha in a match? Uh, you know, uh, he's just another player to us. You know, we, we <laughs> thought that going into this, he was, you know, undefeated as a coach or as a fill-in, but uh, nothing different, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, another question, uh, just an interesting tidbit. We saw Mint on the Blitz. Now, I know I know Mint is a Blitz player. I know he can really do work with that, but with the recent ADS changes to the Shields, what was, what was the thought process behind that pick? Um, actually, it was interesting. We were just showing the Blitz in the, in the Blitz in the very beginning to kind of scare him, and then right when we were going to six pick off of it, Mint was like, I'm just going to keep it. <laughs> um, and he had a, he probably had a read like they were, uh, TSM was running a lot of roam setups. So we thought that the blitz would really help with the roam clear. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ended up getting the opening pick and they backed up off the roam and they just played really heavy sight. So the blitz wasn't really good for that scenario. But uh, yeah, we were, we were just kind of using it for the roam clear. So one thing I noticed uh, by watching that match was that your, especially on defense, but it was apparent on attack as well, but on, on defense, your anchor play, but or just in general, your your overall play was about some of the calmest siege I've seen in a long time. It was some of the most calculated siege I've seen in a long time. Like, for example, that uh, hyper play when he came up from behind, his positioning and crosshair placement was impeccable. Now, right. is that an overall kind of thought process that you're trying to enforce on the team? Like, is that what you guys are practicing for? Or do you feel like this match just really came together right here and now? Uh, no, I definitely think that's, think that's something that we practice for. We strive for pra uh, in practice to make sure that everything we do is thought out, everything that we do is methodical, and the plays that we're making are properly communicated. So. Uh, we went down two guys early that uh, that round, and Paul, you know, made an early call. He's like, "I'm going to play for a flank," and uh, you know, he communicated with the team every, you know, perfectly about what he was doing, and uh, he got a 4K, I think, that round. So he, you know, he helped us a lot that round. Another thing I want to bring up for uh, to you guys is the uh, the castle strategy we've been seeing on the basement um, <laughs> from a multiple different North American teams, where it'll be <laughs> a castle in the middle floor, then a roam on the top floor with some reinforcements. Where is that coming from, and why has it become so popular in North America? Um, I just think it's kind of a setup that is really annoying to deal with. Uh, just because Clubhouse is kind of a map that's really hard to clear, so it takes a lot of time and utility. So if you're able to waste a lot of utility from the attackers and waste their time and then fall all the way back to uh, to site, it's just really difficult for the attackers to deal with it. So I just uh, I think it's just a really strong setup. One more question. Um, Leading into today, you guys had about a 97% chance to go to Japan. Now, I, I don't know if it's confirmed at this point, but it, it looks like you guys are all but certain to go. Um, so, I mean, how does that make you guys feel? How excited are you about your likelihood, your very, very strong likelihood to be making yeah. it to the finals? Oh, uh, we, uh, you know, we're ecstatic about the about everything. Uh, we've been putting in so much work to the team, and we're here to show the world that, you know, we're not a team that is uh, going to get third place anymore. We're here to, we're a LAN team now, and we're going to make sure that we uh, do everything we can to show up at these LAN events, not just perform well online, so. Well, it is going to be interesting when, when, if, I suppose, you guys get there. Uh, but uh, anything to say before we close out the interview to your fans and those watching? Um, actually, you know, I want to say uh, I hope Parker's doing well. I hope I get to see him back on the broadcast really soon. Uh, I'm really unfortunate to hear about his circ uh, his circumstance, and uh, also for Jarvis, man, like you know, for Jarvis. And uh, other than that, thank you for all our fans, and I'll catch you guys uh, next interview, hopefully. Yeah, good to talk to you again, Nix, and uh, I'll catch you later. Uh, later, congratulations on your win. Thanks, Kix. How's it going, Foxy? Uh, pretty good. How's how are you? I am well, thank you for asking. So that was a pretty exciting win, 7-2, a really strong one. And last time we spoke, I made note of the fact that it didn't seem that likely that you guys were gonna be able to make it to land, but now suddenly you're two points away from second place. I mean, how does that feel? I mean, like I said in the other interview, you know, one win, one loss makes a difference. And mm. I don't really know where that statistic came from. I think it was that post, but it's... that post didn't really make sense because like Rogue and SSG had a better chance than us, which they are both good teams, but we had more points at the time. So, so my, I don't know how it happened. But... My understanding is that it's actually a mathematical equation based on uh, the performance of the team throughout the season and then also uh, also their points total. So like it also it has to do with comparisons of I think direct comparisons of like statistical performances. But yeah. I don't actually know the exact calculation myself either. Anyway, it's just something to latch onto. What I do know mm -hmm. is that you guys had a really good performance not only today but in the last play day and because of that now suddenly you're yeah, you're really really close to that land spot and that's that's impressive but to 
to move on to that, uh, move on from that, um, one big question I have for you guys is, did you know who you were going to be playing today? Like, in terms of players, and did you plan for that? Um, I mean, yeah, we made a joke like a week ago that, you know, teams were getting to play the weaker Sonics because they didn't have Gonfi and Slevin. Hmm. And we said, like, you know, we're such an unlucky team, they're probably going to have their two, like, starting <laughs> players at the day of our match. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we guessed it. So, I don't know, we, we've scrimmed them before. They're a good team. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew what to look out for. We knew they, they don't play bank too much, but, you know, new players, new strats, I'm sure they came up with some, uh, came up with the stuff they did so mm. um, we kind of knew yesterday that we were going to be playing them but either way it's still like we still have to play our game still have to play against it uh, like a sonic so right yeah. so uh, another question for you uh, the uh, your attack strategies especially seem to have a lot of focus put on refracts now that's just my perspective of it when I see uh, for example one of your basement attacks where you had three coming from the main staircase and two coming from garage um, the thing that really stands out to me is the level of trust that allows strategies like that to work. Because when I see you guys pushing in, it's always like, I'm going to take this fight. And if I don't win it, I know my teammate's going to win it. Is that something you guys are planning around? Or is that just how it happens with, uh, with how your team is structured? Um, I think one of the changes we made is like just trying to really like get get the trade so yeah we really do trust our teammates in certain ways most of the time like especially if you're the first one going in like at least for me with ash uh like you know i'm just gonna go in and hope my teammate has the flank and or has my cover and it's like i'm the entry if i don't do that or if you know mark doesn't do that or anybody on the team doesn't do that then we're just gonna end up sitting on like white stairs or sitting outside garage not moving so one person just has to make the the crazy play and then the other one just has to follow up on it so this is a very specific question, and you might not be able to answer it directly, but one thing I've, I've noticed over your last few matches is Laxing has some crazy angles. Like, I noticed it on Clubhouse. He was all the way back in uh, in Spawn by Kennels, on the, and he was looking into Cash. And I noticed it here on Bank, he was on Repel off, uh, off front to, uh, the, on the front door Repel, looking all the way into Sight. Is he the one who's going into dry runs and finding these angles, or is that like a team effort? No, I mean, Alax puts in a lot of work himself, of course, like, he, he's a rat, like, he'll play casual and he'll, like, sit across the map, like, on the new map canal, he'll sit outside spawn for three minutes and just, he'll get a kill somehow, but it's like, that's what he does, he knows all the spots to go to, mm -hmm. um, I don't know how he finds it, but he usually does, so, but yeah, most of the time we'll see it, we'll, and then maybe one of us use it one time or another, but for majority, it's on him, like, his part. Really impressive. All right, well... Thank you for the interview. Anything you want to say to everybody watching and all of your fans at home? Yeah, again, thank you to all their fans. Um, you know, again, <laughs> we we had a, a rough start. Um, of course, we're trying to change things to make it better, and hopefully it's on the up. So hopefully we see everyone in Japan, but there's still a long way to go to, uh, until we get there. And uh, hi, Valley. <laughs> well, it seems like you have changed things for the better, and good luck to you in the future. Thank you for the interview, Voxay. Thank you. How's it going, Lycan? Hey, how's it going? It's, you know, it's well. Thank you for asking. So, uh, 16 points. You guys put yourself in fourth place. Uh, that's a pretty big win over Luminosity. Yeah, um, definitely was, like, obviously expecting a little bit better result out of Monday. But uh, to be able to um, come back and win today, I mean, that's really big for us, too. Congratulations and good job. Um you know, honestly, it was a 7-4. It looked like it could have been even more one-sided with a couple of those rounds, just minor mistakes. And, you know, we're, a lot of us are wondering with the, with the roster, of course, you know, all these different, uh, all these changes happening. Uh, how, how confident are you guys feeling? How uh, really secure are you guys feeling with, uh, with how, these, uh, how the teamwork is playing out, how the rounds are overall? Yeah, I mean, Monday didn't show it at all. Uh, like last Wednesday, you could see like we did really well. And then today as well, too. And I think the scoreline was as close as it was because we had to play attack first. I mean, with Thatcher and Capital banned on Clubhouse, it mm -hmm. puts a lot of work on attack. So I think getting three three like rounds at all on Clubhouse with that is like huge. So um, yeah, I think like with Canadian and everything, like we're looking for the future. I mean, like it's unfortunate that we probably at this point won't get Japan, but like that's not what we're interested in. Technically, I think it's still possible for you guys. It's just, it is. It's just, yeah. it would be really hard, right? Um, okay, so huh, not looking for Japan, but still putting yourselves in a good position to avoid relegations. Um, 
one thing I want to ask, and I know this is this is kind of um, not exactly to do with this match, but more the last. What what happened against TSM? Hmm. What was going on? Because there's something there's something that was not seen by everybody else that was happening there to cause that result. Yeah, I think we um, were a little flustered. We got ahead of ourselves. I honestly think that we were overconfident. Um, mm -hmm. Previous scrims, like right up to that match, we uh, performed very well. I guess that, that's all I'm going to say. And I think we got ahead of ourselves. I also think that TSM played really well it's against true. us. And so uh, I don't want to take anything away from them. But we did make some mistakes. Some of the rounds on defense were very close and like things didn't go our way um there was like a couple smokes that like got shot out of the air which like you know doesn't always happen and uh stuff like that so uh it hurt us a lot uh we talked about it a lot and uh, all we got to do is move forward you know we're we're looking way past like the next couple months with this roster so well, it honestly looks like with uh, with this last match, it honestly looks like you guys are starting to come into your stride. That was a really uh, well-placed win over Luminosity. But uh, one more question. I actually have asked this before to other people. I want to know your take on the current Clubhouse meta in North America as a whole. Because one thing that I notice is, like, for example, the basement roam has become more of a thing. The castle barricades in the, in the middle floor, the roamers on the top floor, that has been popularized um, in, in macro for, for pretty much everyone in NA, it seems. Um, is it just about the delay factor? What is, what is making this so potent? Um, I don't want to toot our own horn, but we made the strat, oh. and uh, now everyone's running it. Okay. Um, but oh. no, I do honestly think like when we designed it, it was really like throw something different. So before that, it was like the G2 realm where mm -hmm. you had a vigil on the rafters, and then you had someone playing really aggressive on blue. And we did play that for a while, but people started beating us on it and it wasn't working anymore. Okay. So we wanted to come up with something different and it's, yeah, just a lot of denial. Well, I mean, it seems to be working well. And if it, if it was if it was you guys who uh, pioneered that, then I, I gotta say, I've been saying for a long time how ineffective roaming on basement clubhouse is. Uh, even after the rework, it was something that I that I stuck to that a lot of people would would see it happen where like even the G2 roam because I know which one you're talking about like sometimes it's an alibi sometimes it's a vigil yeah. upstairs yeah, yeah, yeah. and they'll delay and they'll retreat um, even that roam often was would be punished so to see that roam coming out strong in the North American meta and actually working more often than not that's that's really cool to see um, thanks is there anything you want to say to everybody watching um, and your fans at home yeah, same thing as always. I really appreciate everyone who comes out here to watch the games, not just for SSG, but everyone. Like, thank you very much for uh, supporting Rainbow Six. And um, yeah, look forward to the future, man. Yeah. I promise you we're not making a change at the split, so. I I'm sure Veli will be really happy about that. <laughs> yeah, you get his seal yeah. of approval there. A double thumbs yeah. up. And uh, honestly, I'm happy about that, too. I. I I want to see you guys like stay in the stride because it's been like it's been, a, it's been a lot of this, you know. It's been a lot of this, and we're all waiting for we're all waiting for just the straight good all the time. But yes. uh, good job on uh, staying away from relegations at least, and uh, congratulations on your win. Thank you. <laughs>